Hello, thanks for your company. Welcome to Football 360. Coming up on today's edition, the highlights between Sterling and Floriot, we catch up with WA football icon John O'Connell, Alan McKenzie tells us his memorable moment, and we unearth another rising star. But first, Riley Woodcock has his sights set on playing for Australia at the Under-20 World Cup in two years' time. The Perth Glory youngster told us about the benefits of the NTC and his green and gold dreams. So first started playing for Kelm Scott Roos, hometown. Played there for two seasons and then went on to Gosnells as a junior. We stayed there to about under 13s, went to Forest Field and then ended up at Coburn whilst I was starting to come into the NTC as an associate. My dad's from a family of five brothers who all, who all played football, so it was kind of smashed into me growing up in the backyard type thing, so I always had a bit of a spark and wanted to play. Played at the Under-17 World Cup, obviously, in 2011. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, it was a great experience. I mean, playing for your country in a World Cup is obviously something that's unexplainable, really, and in front of uh, that many people watching on the world stage, it was crazy. And to get through the group and, and also play against teams like Brazil and stuff was was an experience that yeah, I'll, I'll always cherish. Can you just tell us a little bit about the recent Australian under-20s camp? Yeah, so we had our uh, first camp for the 95s in, in Canberra, with a group of uh, 26 boys. Um, went for about four days with Ocon and, and Milan, and from a first camp it was, it was really good. Seven WA players in this particular group that went away then. What's the secret to that success, do you think? I mean, I guess, the NTC program with Kenny Lowe and Gareth Navin and stuff, they play to a certain structure which is all to the FFA curriculum. Through the NTC it's been great learning that from such a young age and then when you go into that environment you're really comfortable. Training with Glory, what's that like? With Alistair coming in, for young players we kind of expected there was going to be a bit of change but to happen that quickly and, and they'll be in there full time and stuff, it's really good and the environment under Alistair and Gareth is really good and it's a good ground to develop I guess for us young boys. Just lastly what's the ultimate goal for you as a footballer? I'd like to play the Senior World Cup for Australia, maybe play in Europe, play for Arsenal or something like that. <laughs>
uh, Brent Atherton, Harry Long. It was a, a fantastic side. And then I went back to my old club, uh, East Fremantle Tricolori, to coach there. I had three seasons uh, back as a coach with uh, East Fremantle Tricolori. I was privileged to uh, hold a record along with two other players, uh, Peter Holt and uh, uh, David O'Callaghan. 44 times I played for the state team. Uh, the state teams were able to play against teams like Manchester United. They were here twice, actually, in, in Perth. Uh, Chelsea, Tottenham Hotspur, Sunderland, uh, Middlesbrough. Uh, teams like that. And we also uh, were going into Asia at that time. I went into Asia for the first time in 1968 and played in the Medeca tournament. The Medeca tournament was uh, a tournament that was put on to celebrate uh, uh, Malaysia's independence. Uh, to be able to play against you know, Manchester United and Chelsea and Tottenham and all these sides was pretty awesome. We've been a bit unfortunate in the sense of uh, not being able to have the proper facilities that we're needing. We've just gone through a process of uh, a home for football. Uh, because we are the biggest team sport in, in WA now, for the status we have as a sport here in WA, we really need to have those state-of-the-art facilities to help with the progress. Well, I, I work for a, a company called Sports Challenge and uh, we went up to Singapore to work in uh, St. Joseph's Primary School and I, I thought it might be a good idea to take up our programme of uh, Home for Football and uh, I had uh, a number of contacts uh, already in Singapore and they helped as well. So uh, we went up there and we thought, well, it'd be a good idea to let the people up there know what we're doing down here and maybe uh, get their support as well, which was very forthcoming, I might add. Well, here at Perth Glory, we thought we'd practice some of the things that make QBE great, like 125 years of experience. We trolled a new fraud replacement policy. Can I have a... Thanks, Bess. And comprehensive cover? Well, that seemed like a pretty good idea too. Turns out, what's great for your insurance, not so good for football. QBE, see how competitive we are with your insurance. I was about seven in England, me and my brother just went down to the local park and I started playing with all his teammates and just carried on from there. Messi, because of his mad skills and he's just such a good player all around and I just love him. Best thing about playing football is probably just meeting people, getting to travel with it and it's just really fun and I love it. I mainly play centre back but I can play all along the back line. I love to involve other players, I like to talk to them and communicate with them and I'm a strong player on the ball. I'd love to play professionally, I'll just get as far as I possibly can with football. It's time to take a look at the match of the week between Sterling and Florian. The match of the week sees our cameras at Macedonia Park for the match between Sterling Lions and Florida Athena, with Sterling wanting to continue their winning start to the season and Floriot hoping for three points after two draws. Both teams had half chances in the opening exchanges, but the deadlock was broken in the 23rd minute when Bobby Wilson tripped Lions captain Andy Brown in the box and Rory Grant converted from the spot. Three minutes later, it was 2-0. Jason Gavin nodding home from a Dean Evans corner. But just before half-time, Floriot were back in the game. James Cogley handled in the area, and Floriot skipper Mark Pritchard made no mistakes from the spot. Floriot came out firing in the second half but were undone on the break in the 53rd minute when Arnold swept home a Scott Bullock cross to make it 3-1. Floriot seemed to deflate after the third goal and a minute into stoppage time, Sterling emphasised their dominance with a fourth goal when substitute Anthony Lyons headed home from an Arnold cross. 
The final score, 4-1 to Sterling, putting them joint top with Bayswater, who they face at Frank Drager Reserve next week. Full credit to the lads. We thoroughly deserved to win and I thought we played some excellent football. The conversation at half-time was really about, well, you know, we've dominated for most of the half. They have got him to a soft goal from our point of view, good goal from theirs. But um, I just said, let's start the game from the, the beginning. In other results, Armadale's winning start came to an end, losing 1-3 to Sorrento. Coburn beat ECU Joondal up 2-1. Balcata had a 2-0 away win at Perth. Inglewood thumped the NTC 7-3 and Bayswater came from behind to win 2-3 against Bunbury. Coming up next week, Sorrento face Coburn, Floriot host ECU Joondla, Balcata are away to Inglewood and Armadale take on Visitors Perth. Sunday sees our match of the week, Bayswater City v Sterling Lions. And that wraps up another busy show. Peter Capsanis will be back next week. I hope you enjoyed the show.